Welcome back to California Cooking. We're taking the show on the road today, getting you ready for the LA Marathon happening on November 7th. And what I mean by getting you ready is we're gonna introduce you to some of the must try restaurants along the route from Dodger Stadium all the way to Century City. I made it to mile two right here on Cesar Chavez and Broadway and I'm already thinking about food. So here's what I have mapped out for us today. Stop number one is a burger spot and butcher shop here in Chinatown, and I hear it has some of the best fries in town. Then we're checking out a family-run Chinese restaurant in Hollywood, serving up enough orange chicken each year to feed all of the marathon runners. And our final destination is gonna be a mouth-watering dessert, including a chocolate chip cookie that I'm willing to run 26 miles for. Okay, I'm ready to head to our first stop to refuel. It's a little bit off the route, but totally worth the detour. Let's go. This is Amboy's Quality Meats and Delicious Burgers. We're gonna meet Chef Kailan's right-hand man, Christian, come on. Hi, Christian. Hello. <laughs> how you doing? I'm well, how are you? Good, good. So this is the main man, huh? Yep, Alvin Kailan, chef, entrepreneur, businessman. Yeah, but you're his right-hand man. Yes, yes. We got to know each other. I used to work at Sweet Fit and he had his own thing going on in, in Chinatown, Unit okay. 120. Yeah. And we had like clicked because we were obviously Filipinos and this and that. And like, this was about like eight years ago. Right. Or like, yeah, I think so, eight years ago. And then we hung out in Chinatown. He was like, come out here. I was like, I'm probably in Carson. I'm not gonna do that, you know? Um, but I'm glad I did because as soon as I came out, yeah. like we clicked, we became homies. Like I hung out with his friends. I got to know them. I got even closer with the Filipino community, the yeah. kid, like the chef community. Did you bond over food first or the oh, fact that you were Filipino? Uh, 100% over okay. food first. A lot of people watching maybe like, I haven't really hung out in Chinatown. I don't know what's uh, there. I don't, you know, go so out to eat there. There's so much. Yeah. And, like a place like Amboy, it's hidden. It's a hidden little gem. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily drive by and go, oh, there it is. It's the cleanest hole in the wall, you know? Yes, it's like absolutely. A, no, and, and the Far East Plaza, where we're at now, yeah. it's like the epicenter of where to in Chinatown right now. Not to say that Chinatown doesn't have more outside. Sure. We have Howlin' Rays, PRD, like Pearl River Deli, <laughs> we have La Cita. Amboy, like all of these places. Like you wanna, you're here, Laura Lou has the best desserts. We want vegan really? desserts, uh, Baker's Bench. Like yeah. we have it all. Everything becomes word of mouth. And that's how this place became popular. Really? We wanted it to be organic. We didn't wanna be like, oh, Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash. We just wanted it to be like, come in, your first experience is talking with Alvin, yeah. talking with the team, looking at the meats in the case, looking at the dry age, or like actually tasting a hot burger versus something that drove 10 minutes to Which you. isn't the same. Yeah, exactly. Now, Amboy, I said, what does Amboy stand for? He's American boy. Uh, Amboy, Am Girl. It's a nickname you give to um, the next generation of Filipinos um, who aren't born in the Philippines yeah. or like are raised in America. And so it's like, oh, you're my Amboy. It was uh, Alvin's relative gave him that nickname okay. because, you know, he's an American boy. You know? yeah. yeah. You guys opened this place May of 2020 yep. during the pandemic, which must have been super scary to 100%. have this concept, which originally you said was going to be a high-end kind of steak joint. Yeah, he wanted it to be like an intimate steakhouse. Yeah. Um, steaks that no one really okay, is yeah. familiar with. And you said like, yeah, exactly. so it would have been a couple of tables, yeah, exactly. right? When you guys decided, okay, let's pivot a little bit. Let's figure out how we're going to make this concept work. We knew during the pandemic, like, well, Alvin especially, like he would order something at Whole Foods and be like, this is expensive and this isn't a quality like steak. Like that's when he it clicked like, oh, the people need provisions. I have access to all of this meat and like who better to trust than a chef to give you the proper cuts of meat. So then he started selling meat, he started selling ground beef and then we were like, he's the host of the burger show, why not make burgers? It only makes and it sense. Just clicked, yeah, okay. 100%. So do you guys butcher things here yeah. in the back? So we get primal cuts here mm -hmm. and some of the primal cuts I'll put in the dry ager and just put a timer like a couple, like 38 days or so. Oh, wow. Um, and so we also dry age brisket for our DH burger, our deluxe hamburger, yeah. So that has a blend of our chuck, um, brisk, and then the dry aged brisket. So it gives it that nice little like steakhouse. Yeah. Cause we have burgers for everyone. We have like a smash burger, meat cheese bun for the simplest. Uh, we have the classic, we have sesame seed bun, double smash, like our uh, Amboy secret sauce. Yeah. We have a picante, which is like the twin version of, this, of the classic, but spicy. Okay. We have a grizzly where we tallow fry the meat. We have the, the, the 10 ounce DH burger, like everything. We have the Royale with cheese. Like, so the menu was, uh, it was created and it was thought out and it 
when you think of meat, bun, cheese, everything, ratio from flavor, everything was thought out. First things first, I have to give Christian a shout out because this is such a pristine, clean kitchen. I love that. Like, oh, appreciate I'm appreciate you, appreciate you. Thank you, you guys. You can tell when you walk back here, everything's like. I would, I would. I'm here to make Alvin shiny, proud. Shiny, perfect. Never. What are you, What are we doing? We're gonna make our most popular burger, the yes. classic burger. Classic. Okay. So a custom made bun from Bread Bar. Amazing. Sesame seed. Yep. And we smear some uh, beef butter on. Now there. what's beef butter? So beef butter, we take the tallow from all like the fat that we, we like, get from the steaks. Yeah. Render, uh, grind it down, render it, and then we whip it with butter. You guys are crazy. That's crazy. That right? is insane. Two of our custom blend Amboy patties. Yes. Okay, remind me what's in the blend again. So we have chuck, brisket, and a steak trim. Mm. And you give it a smash. Oh yeah. The season, salt and pepper. Okay. Now here's the thing. I'm a th I'm with I'm a thin burger girl. I like yeah, the yeah. patty thin. Some people go for thick, and you've got both. We got the DH for the thick heads. Yep. You know, and then we have uh, the classic, the ordinaire, yeah. all the good stuff. Yeah. And here's. The the good stuff. This right here. Okay. This is what we're having <laughs> here. This is you're not your typical. This is spatula. technique. All right. Oh Over yeah. There. Oh yeah. Flip Look that. at that. It's got the brown crusty bits on it. Yes. Mm. Yes. The Mayo. We have here eight hours worth of uh, caramelized onion. Oh my gosh. It's like a jam. A good classic burger can't go without. American cheese for Amboy. Exactly, American boy cheese, Amboy cheese. <laughs> so this bun is nice and toasted. Yes. While that one goes to thicker, we'll let that go. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, or dress our uh, mm -hmm. our bun here. So our burger sauce. Okay, what's in, is it a secret? It's a secret, but yeah. it's a not so secret, okay. you know what I mean? It's, it's, every, not, it's, it's everyone's not. secret sauce, but it's our secret sauce. Bottom bun. Yes, nice look at that. I'm in love and I haven't tasted it yet. All right, oh my. our classic. Christian, I have an addiction, and it's burgers. Uh, and so now- you're in the headquarters of your addiction. Problems. I have found the place that, yes, feeds my addiction because the this burger, I had to stop myself so I can make room. Oh, yeah. This you said your favorite was a smash, so we're gonna go with classic. It is so good because you know what, to me, makes a good burger? When all the, it all, the cheese and the sauce and it just starts dripping off the bun. You got a little catcher for all the oh, juice. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me what's going on. All right, so we'll start from the biggest. Yes. We'll go from here. We'll go okay, here. sure. The DH, it's our uh, deluxe hamburger, 10 ounce thickness, uh, bl our, our blend blended with our dry aged brisket. Look at this. Well, first of all, it's heavy. 10 ounces, man. That's oh. almost, that's definitely more than half a pound. Tell me about this guy. Um, and then this one is our grizzly. This one's my personal favorite. Okay. It's simple, yeah. you know, mustard, onion, pickle. One patty? Two patties, two, patties. two cheeses. Yeah. We, sm we smash yeah. them as well. Yeah. We also fry it in tallow, so it's unctuous. And then okay. this big boy, uh, medium boy, compared to the DH, this is our Royale with cheese. Uh, it's got shredded lettuce, uh, red relish, mayo mustard, American cheese, onions. A thicker patty, but we also smash, but not okay. like thin, thin. But not as smash. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I have a feeling it was a late night situation when you came up with this. I mean, who who doesn't like loaded right? fries? You got fries, you got burger, you're lazy, you want a fork, you got burger fries, what? you got loaded fries. So we have chopped burger meat, provolone, caramelized onions, sour cream and onion sauce, pickled peppers on our golden fried fries. Addicted. <laughs> I see you eating with your hands. I appreciate I that. I can't do you a, need fork. a fork. I can't with my fries. There you go, oh. that's sour cream and onion sauce. Because you think of a sour cream and onion potato chip. Right, but right. Better. But better. Mm. Well, You're my hamburger soulmate. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Those were some delicious burgers and these loaded fries. Yum. All right, coming up, I'm headed to mile 12, Sunset in La Brea for some homemade Chinese cooking. And then later, I'm going to need some dessert to get me through the rest of the race. See you in a few. Just ran through Hollywood Walk of Fame, made it all the way to Sunset La Brea. This is mile 12. I'm almost halfway to the finish line. 
And there's a family owned restaurant that's been here for over 25 years. Let's check out Hoy's Wok Chinese Kitchen. Hi, Jessica. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming in. Lemons from the backyard? Yes, it is. The Yuzu lemons. Oh my gosh. I love that this restaurant is family run. 1985 is when it started. I mean, that's probably when you were born. I don't know how old you are, but you look like you're barely older than 1985. Just about. Just right? About, yes. So you grew up in the restaurant. I have. That's amazing. And so mom and dad started it or how did it come to be this restaurant? Yeah, so my father is the original chef uh, since yeah. day one, and uh, the recipe he actually brought back from Hong Kong. Wow. And uh, what he did was he fused it with the American ingredients yeah. and put it into like a traditional gourmet Chinese food in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, isn't it, a, I think it's so incredible. Like that's what's obviously great about America and Los Angeles is the melting pot, right? Everybody brings the cuisine from where they came from. And then they put that American spin on it, yes, right? exactly. What I love about our food is there's so much Chinese culture in yeah. it. Yeah. The ingredients that is actually infused within it, it's just so unique that it, people could relate because it's actually an American dish, but with Chinese taste. Oh. What's it like to work with mom and dad every day? Um, in the beginning was uh, very challenging, <laughs> but what it is is that you have to adapt yourself and understand what they've been through. Yeah. We're so thankful for the regulars and the locals that yeah. continue supporting our small family chains or businesses okay. that we're able to be here to do the best we can to make sure that we are here for them. I would imagine during the pandemic, this is the kind of food you love to order. I think Chinese food really works for to go, right? Oh, it's the best. It's it's seriously the best. You yeah. can eat for some today, eat some for later, eat yes. for some tomorrow's lunch. And what it is is that our portion is fairly large. Mm. So what it is is that you get the best for your butt. Right. What's your favorite on the menu? The orange chicken. Is that what? That's what, exactly That's right. the orange chicken? Yes. Okay. Talk to me about what's on the table because it looks amazing. So first here we have the orange chicken. Now is dad really back here just do, cooking it up on the walk? Every day for 35 years. You're kidding. Non-stop, haven't taken one vacation. You're kidding. Yeah, he loves it here. Oh yeah. Crispy, Yes. sweet, tangy. Yes. All those things you know and love about orange chicken, that is so good. It's dangerously delicious. Dangerously? I always tell everyone that. So true. <laughs> and then the shrimp. A honey glazed one. Oh shrimp. God. Lightly fried? Lightly fried. Mm -hmm. And then now your mom and dad, your dad's from Hong Kong, your mom's from Shanghai. Exactly. So do they kind of contribute different things from foods they grew up on? Uh, they, they have very, uh, it's very different. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did, we brought from Shanghai is the dumplings really? and uh, the steam bows. Yeah. Uh, that, that's very, very traditional. Okay. But uh, the Hong Kong is all the bursts in the food that we yeah. have in front of us. That shrimp, so good. And I see some fried rice. Yes, shrimp fried rice. Shrimp fried rice. <laughs> and then some green beans. So yes, braised green beans right here. Mm -hmm. Love that. Gotta get your veggie. Yes, everything fresh produce, fresh ingredients, everything is cut the day of the shrimp chow mein. Chow mein. Yes, noodles, <laughs> every kid's favorite. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sam, how cool. The marathon is gonna go right past your restaurant. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna, I can't yeah. wait to see these individuals running across and I stop in. Exactly, <laughs> you might just join. Yeah, I might just join too. <laughs> Sam, cheers. Cheers. This here is our homemade Thai iced tea, freshly brewed on daily. Yeah. I will make one just for you to go. I think I might need that to finish the race. <laughs> I'll see you there. All right. Thanks, Sam. I love meeting Sam and his family. I can see why they've been open for business for 25 years now. And Sam, I'm going to need this iced tea. Thank you. Okay, coming up. I'm headed through West Hollywood, making my way over to Century City for some delicious dessert at Clementine. See you guys in a bit. Ah, oh, I made it, mile 26, home stretch here in Century City. Man, am I hungry. I think it's a perfect time to grab a little dessert at Clementine, a family owned business and we're going to talk to the lovely Annie. Whew.
Annie, we have the perfect spot to watch the race. Yes, I know. It's gonna come right by there and then right back, right? Yeah, this is, a, what a great spot right along Santa Monica Boulevard. And of course the Century City Mall right across the street. Yeah. What a spot. Yeah, I know. It should make it easier for people to come out, I think. I think so too. In 20 years, right? And this spot, how did it come to be? You know, I, ha I was, uh, working as a cook, I mean, I worked at Campanile and La Brea Bakery is where I okay. kind of grew up in my experience. I also had always kind of liked the idea of a bakery and also something where I didn't have to work till two in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, you know, and I always wanted like a neighborhood place yeah. too, like to have a, the community part is like what means the most to me. When you walk in here, it, it, you know how those places just have that kind of home, homey feeling, and I think Clementine has that. You look Thanks. at the bakery case, and it's got all this yummy yeah. stuff, and you even said, you're like, this business actually was meant for takeout. We were already kind of geared up for that. Yeah. So even though we had to still do a lot of pivoting, Right. It, you know, we were already kind of partly in that direction. Yeah. You're going to open, normally you wouldn't be open on Sunday, right? Not usually, no. That's yeah. our one day we always take a break, but <laughs> I've always thought, you it would be, I always come out to watch the marathon, yeah. I especially like coming early and seeing uh, the first round with the yes. wheelchairs come by. I think that's so amazing. Uh, so I would bring my kids out and stuff and I've always thought, oh, we should have like a little, just at least like a tent out here with right. muffins. Um, but this year when I heard that it's gonna be ending right here, the finish line is just a couple blocks away. I thought, okay, yeah, we should figure out yeah. what we should do, yeah. Do something cool. I mean, look, these runners have to carb load too, Aunt Annie. They, <laughs> I, your bakery case. I'm not could. sure they're gonna be stopping <laughs> along the way. <laughs> if you do wanna come and watch the marathon, Clementine, perfect place to get a little bite for breakfast if you wanna come out early or lunch. I think we're gonna have like uh, muffins and coffee yeah. and stuff for sure. We haven't figured out if we're going to have the whole breakfast thing, but we'll have grab and go. So there'll be a lot of options right. where people want to hang around, or hang out around here or like take something and go over by the finish line. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. What is your top seller? What do people have to have when they come to Clementine? Well, item wise, the chocolate chip cookie, of course. Really? Uh, yeah. And that, Why do they different. love your chocolate chip cookie? You know, it has universal following anyway. True. But I think ours is particularly good. Well, we use really good chocolate. Uh -huh. uh, it's kind of thin. It's not the prettiest. Okay. But it uh, it actually, I think, sometimes looks like a cow pie almost around the edge. It's like it gets these wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it, that means it's like caramelized and crispy yes. on the edges. And, and like softer in the yeah. middle. Annie, it's exhausting to run this race, and you have, you have you, given you, me plenty to work on. Yeah, yeah. You you ran it already, Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I just... Yeah. So you... Or you're prepping. Either way, you need to finish this. Either food. way, I need this to happen right yeah, now. And yeah. should we start with dessert, or should we start with... How do you usually do it at home? Well, dessert, yeah. but since I'm here, let's... Okay. Let's do their this is salad. Probably, this is our most popular salad. Yeah. This is our Greek salad. It's got uh, romaine and uh, red cabbage, hearts of palm. I love hearts of palm, Annie. Yeah. That is good. Breath Thank is you. fabulous. Thank you. That's an oregano vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. This is our Clementine chicken salad sandwich. I saw the table over there had it. Yeah. And I eyeballed it when I it's walked in. It's on a pecan raisin bread, and the chicken salad itself has grapes and apples. Talk so. to me about this bread. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Pecan raisin. It's I I like the the sweetness and mm. it's got like that good density and then it has watercress on there as well. Look at this piece of chicken you get in her <laughs> chicken salad. <laughs> yeah. I, That's serious. So after you finish that uh -huh. and move on to the salad course, we yeah. do we have a, a case where we have all kinds of um prep seasonal salads and you can get a three salad combo. Mm. Um, so this is roasted Brussels sprouts. Mm. Uh, we've got a couscous here with butternut squash and uh, yeah. dried cranberries. This is edamame with poached wild king salmon. Ooh, lovely. So these salads, we, we rotate throughout yeah. the year depending on season. Let's start with your famous okay. chocolate chip cookie. Just as she described, cow pie style. <laughs> <laughs> But you're so right. This is how I like my chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, yeah. Crispy, but soft in the middle. Depending on my feeling, de de determines whether I 
end my, because I always need to plan my last bite if it's going to be middle or edge, you know. Fanny, you're my spirit animal because I think the same <laughs> way. And it's thin. I like yeah. that. Then when, after you finish the cookies, you're going to have, this is our apple pie. So this is the one, uh, you can get this either baked like this. This is yeah. the small version. So, and then we do a nine inch one. Single serve. <laughs> Single. You can uh, mm. get this as a bake at home too. Mm -hmm. Look at all those layers of apple. Oh my gosh. So imagine this like, you know, mm. baking in your oven Thanksgiving day. And uh, then some baked goodies. Yeah, these are more of our, like our breakfasty pastry type thing. So our blueberry sour cream coffee cake muffin is probably our most popular mm. muffin. This is our banana bread with uh, walnuts. This is an apricot ginger scone. Last but not least, your good old fashioned brownie with some walnuts. Oh yeah. Annie, I hate to eat and run. Oh, lunch okay. is great. Oh, ho hold on one, oh. one second. I forgot. Oh my gosh, Annie. You're a champion. See you later, Annie. See ya, Bye. Good luck. All right, finish line right over there, Avenue of the Stars. We did it. And thanks to Annie, I carb loaded just in time. Thank you guys. See you next week. To wrap it, or would you like? No, to I want to see how you wrap it. All right, tell me first. You find the most gorgeous side, yeah. Then you you swaddle, swaddle this baby. Uh, I have a two year old, <laughs> you know how to swaddle. Look at that beauty! All right, only one time someone decided to do a double, and I looked up, I looked double? back, and I was like, Hey, your man, you know, your burger is gonna be like bigger than your head, and he was like, So confident, and we just all watched him eat it. He took and it he down, did it. yeah.